the 4th of August, 1806. A lone ship is desperately trying to make shore in a brutal hurricane. On board is a Spanish officer, Santiago de Liniers. He must make the crossing no matter what, to rescue his city and colony from the clutches of the British. January, 1806, a fleet of British ships are sailing for South Africa. On board, Rear Admiral Sir Holmes Riggs Popham and his subordinate, Sir William Carr Beresford. No, I'm not making these names up. Are escorting an invasion force to the Cape of Good Hope. Once there, the British wage war against the pro-Napoleon Dutch. And after some fierce guerrilla fighting, the Dutch are brought under heel. This victory would sow the seeds of what would one day blossom into the horribly racist nation of British South Africa. But it's in the ashes of the aftermath that Sir William Beresford hmm. gets an idea. Hey, you know, since we just beat the Dutch, how about we head over to the other side of the pond and take on the Spanish? You know, that lucrative Rio de la Plata that we Brits have been wanting to get our grubby paws on for the longest time? So let's say we just head over and steal from the hard work of others, like the two-bit thieves we British Empire builders have always been. Well, old Popham thought this was a brilliant idea, so he promoted Beresford to general, and the two went on their merry way across the Atlantic, with visions of the golden age of Sir Francis Drake dancing through their heads. The invasions of La Plata were about to begin. June 1806, the Spanish Viceroy was spending the afternoon as usual, with his feet up napping, when he got some alarming news. British ships had <gasps> been spotted. The British made it to the estuary bay of Rio de la Plata. It took them longer than they thought it would to reach it, but a storm reduced their numbers and forced them to resupply halfway over. The capital city of Buenos Aires was too well defended along its coast, so a frontal naval assault was not a good idea. The next good port city was further east, in Sanada. The Brits tried to assault it, but the Viceroy had sent his most competent field commander, Santiago de Linier, to defend it. He made short work of repelling the British. Beresford had no other choice than to disembark on a marshy coast near the city of Kilmes. As Beresford got closer to the capital, <laughs> the Viceroy took off with the city's treasury, supposedly to keep it safe, but as he was running, he still lost it. Even though this was standard procedure for him to do, he was still branded as a coward by his people. Nevertheless, when Beresford finally made it to Buenos Aires, he found it pretty well undefended, and so a Union Jack was raised over the city. Surprise had won the day. But as Beresford, Popham, and all the rest of the Brits were soon to learn, surprise never lasts for very long. June 
29th, Liniers paid Buenos Cyrus a visit. He promised the British that he wouldn't cause any trouble, but he was on a scouting mission nevertheless. He found that most wholeheartedly opposed the British. Priests denounced the British from their pulpits, referring to them as heathens that should be driven from the land. And the commoners felt that the British were just as bad, if not even worse, than the Spanish. Resistance against the British had started from day one, and Liniers was quick to hook up with them. As for Beresford, he was quite aware that he did not have enough men to hold the colony. He tried every trick in the book to make it seem like he had greater numbers, like ordering way more supplies than he needed, and having the same men don different uniforms at different times as they marched through the city. But all these attempts at deceit were nothing short of laughable to the colonists. Liniers ended his visit, but promised to return. He would head for Montevideo to drum up support. So Liniers took a boat to Montevideo and sought an audience with the Viceroy there. He was a tall, blonde, dashing officer who had risen to the ranks of the Spanish armed forces by merit alone, even though he was a Frenchman by birth. His family immigrated to Spain during the chaos of the French Revolution, which meant Liniers knew a thing or two about people and politics. But despite all this, he wasn't able to convince the Montevideans that the British would come knocking sooner or later at their doors. But as if almost to make his point for him, <laughs> Beresford sent over a fleet to bombard the city. But his fleet bombarded it from so far off that the damage was minimal. Nevertheless, the point had been made clear. The British were a threat to everyone in the region. Montevideo supplied Liniers with weapons and a fleet. But he had to move fast. A report came in of a hurricane that was heading straight towards them. Halfway across the bay, the fleet was hit by the worst of it. The ships were scattered, and all seemed lost. But by a miracle, they all made it to the southern coast of Rio de la Plata intact. In only a few hours, equipment and supplies were offloaded, long before the British would ever know they were there. Word of their landing did eventually get through to Beresford, so he sent out a few scouts to check it out. But they could barely make it anywhere near there. The storm had turned all the roots into pure mud. So Beresford thought he was safe for the time being, because he figured no one would be able to get to him either. But he was wrong. Liniers and the Spanish had one thing that Beresford did not. The love and support of the Rio de la Plata people. Men, women, and children came out to help them move supplies and heavy equipment across the field of mud. Even the impossible task of moving the artillery pieces was done by the back-breaking work of civilians. And in less than a week, they had all the men and equipment at the outskirts of the city. At the northern edge of Buenos Aires, there's a port and market hub called the Retito. There, the British stationed a small garrison, led by a sergeant named Kennedy. When Liniers showed up, it was a complete surprise. He barely managed to get his men into line formation before the assault. But the charge of the Spanish was just a diversion. The Spanish cavalry did a surprise flanking maneuver that sent the British packing. Kennedy was killed. Now in command of the Retito, the first thing Liniers ordered was that his guns should open fire on a nearby British ship. But as word of his arrival spread, volunteers from the city came out in droves to join him, and even some sailors joined the party, swelling his numbers to some 2,500 men. At first, there was a bit of infighting as to what to do next, but some incoming artillery from the British got their asses in gear. First, they sent out the cavalry to cut off all lines of communication for the British. Then, they split their forces into three columns and headed for the downtown core. But halfway over, English cannonballs started to rain down on them. The Justina had returned and was sailing as close to the shore as she dared 
to get her cannons into range. But unfortunately for her, she sailed a little too close to the line and ran aground. That's when the Spanish pulled off something that had never been done before. They attacked a naval ship with cavalry and won. With the Justina's guns silenced, Liniers and the others continued for the downtown core. A scouting party went ahead of them and took out a British nest at a downtown church called La Merced. Once that was cleared, they turned the British guns around and used them to bomb the British. They wasted no time in surrounding the Plaza Major, opposite the fort. All the rooftops around the Plaza Major were raining death down on the British. One of Barrefort's chief engineers was shot dead right beside him. By one o'clock, the fort's hospital was overflowing with British wounded, so Barrefort had no choice than to retreat. They all ran right back into the fort. The only way Beresford could escape the city now was to abandon the wounded, something that would not look good in his resume. His only other choice at this point was to raise the white flag. At first, an angry mob wanted to break into the fort and tear the Brits a new arse, but Lanier intervened. He met with Beresford face to face and promised the British that if they surrendered their weapons immediately, they'd be taken into custody but treated fairly, which included medical attention for their wounded. Beresford agreed, and Liniers kept his promise. But as Beresford sulked in captivity, he must have reflected on how much his fortunes had changed. Only a few months earlier, he had beaten the Dutch and gotten promoted to general. Only a few weeks earlier, he had conquered Buenos Aires, the high point of his life and career. But now he was behind lock and key, and he'd probably be court-martialed, even if he ever made it back home. As for the colonies of La Plata, they had no illusions about the future. They knew exactly what they were in for. For up in London, there was a public outcry that could not be ignored. The people of London wanted a full British invasion force to rescue Beresford and finish what he started, the adding of Rio de la Plata to the British Empire. The far-flung Spanish realm was in for the fight of its life.